Hey nerds, Farmer Jesse here. I have one last video for you from my trip back in April to California where I got to visit our buddy Spencer Rudolph at Sage Hill Ranch Gardens. If you haven't watched our other videos with Spencer, you are completely missing out. That farm is super cool. I mean, it's like built out of a hillside. Anyway, in this one, we get a detailed video about a system he uses to recapture water from both where they wash their produce and off of their greenhouse, then they are able to reuse this water on their gardens. Water management systems like this are critical to the future of farming, obviously, especially in regions like Southern California, so I hope you will watch it and gain some inspiration for how to reuse and recapture some of your own water. And remember, if you like and appreciate these videos, you can thank the Patreon members at patreon.com slash no-till growers. They are the ones that make it possible, and I hope you will consider signing up. All right, let's get to it with Spencer Rudolph of Sage Hill Ranch Gardens. Being that this farm is in uh, Southern California, we're in Escondido, water can get very expensive, especially when it, we don't rain for sometimes eight to 10 months out of the year. We do, our wash pack facility is uh, ran on uh, city water. The When we were designing the wash pack facility, we always knew that we wanted to be able to get at least uh, two to three uses out of uh, out of our fresh water that we were already purchasing. Uh, so one of the one of the reasons that we uh, designed the pack house to have cement floors was that any water falling on the ground, we wanted to be able to recapture and capture that uh, water back down through silting tanks into larger tanks and then re reuse that back out. Um, our nursery uh, directly behind us here will eventually be used as uh, will, the floors will be cemented in there as well, and then any water being used in there will also be captured. Uh, the water as of right now is also coming from our tanks back into our nursery so it's a reused potted repotted water already which is we've seen a huge increase in growth in our nursery that we're not using city water to grow the plants within the nursery because we found that within the city water is treated so heavily that it can actually reduce the growth in the cells uh, so it just removes just enough to where that is the they actually you see damage uh, with the yellow out and things like that um, but so you see drains all throughout here. We have a large uh, drain here, three drains set up in there for our large tanks. We use probably roughly between 3,000, I think that about to 3,000 gallons a week just in fresh water. Um, seems extensive, but I mean, we've done, we do a ton of fresh salad and we do all the root veggies. It requires a ton of washing, things like that. So a lot of water gets used in here. Uh, we wanted to make sure once again, just realize that we want to get at least two to three uses uh, once we get the cement floors back in the nursery since that water is already coming from the tank back in the reusage rate and it's almost it would be hard to measure how many times we can reuse that water within the nursery because it's now being cycled through constantly uh, any water falling on the ground you know trays need to take a lot of watering uh, yeah so here we are we're uh, just under on the downhill side of our wash pack facility uh, and you can see there is these large black pipes. Those actually extend from our nursery and also within our wash pack facility. Uh, the nursery, before we go too far into this, the nursery is actually also has, has been guttered for catching any type of rain. Uh, eventually the larger greenhouses will be guttered as well to also help management with the water coming downhill, but then be able to recapture that water and then store it uh, at a, a larger site above on top of the farm. Um, but these large black pipes then go actually come through here down into these large 200 gallon black tanks here. Uh, these are our desilting tanks. Uh, so each tank uh, is just about three inches below the next where it has the water comes in, goes down through a tank with a pipe within the tank and uh, bubbles up. It's important to have that bubble up feature to where it's not pouring in the more you pour in the more the silt is disturbed so that it flows in and slowly up and what that does then it facilitates through another downspout into the next one that then goes down and comes back up again and like i said it's just important not to disturb too much of the of the silt at the bottom of the tanks but then from there it goes then from there out into uh, our large two 10,000 gallon tanks uh, over here. So these are our uh, desilting tanks. These are ones that come straight directly out of our wash pack facility. You can see that within, if we don't have the proper drain filters on top, sometimes they get clogged. We'll remove it, but we'll get all the salad greens, things like that, that fall on the surface. Uh, one of the things that we ran into when we were first designing this, that we were running into issues of the, we would put a screen, like a uh, window screen over it to kind of stop the debris from 
transferring from one tank to the next. What happened was that that window screen would then clog and then actually stop the tank from transferring. So then what we came up with the idea is, I think we actually just found this at like a local hardware store, is a, uh, it's a, it's a, I don't know, four inch pipe, but on the bottom of it actually has, uh, it has holes in the bottom so that the water actually can go from underneath and through while the debris floats to the surface. So the debris comes to the surface, the clean water now is going up underneath and then through, then back down the down spout, uh, spout into the next tank. And this tank has the same exact thing on it, which is also then collecting uh, the clean water underneath the debris floats to the surface and then transfers then throughout to our large uh, 100 gallon tanks. Um, probably it gets a little flat, but there's probably about maybe a 10 inch difference from the bottom of our wash pack facility to the top of our tank over there. And then from there it drops 15 feet, obviously where the tanks are in place. Yeah, so these, I just thought this was important to show the transfer because it took us a little bit of learning curve to figure out on how to keep the tanks from clogging and overfilling. There is a little bit of a issue with two if you drain our 100 gallon tanks in there too quickly that this tank will actually, you can see it will still overspill. So we have to, there's the downfall is that you have to release the tank slowly, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but then the, the bonus is that you're capturing your water and then reusing it. So these, so once those two uh, 100 gallon tanks are then go through the desilting process, it is then uh, funnels into these large tanks here. So this is a 10,000 and a 9,000 gallon tank. You can actually see that uh, on this pipe here, it does the same exact thing. This, this one funnels in and then fills and it goes through this pipe and then fills in this tank. Uh, once these tanks are to a point or even, you know, to like, you know, 100 gallons or plus, we can then uh, facilitate that through our charging pump. And then this charging pump gets reused back out into all the greenhouses and the lower fields here. Primarily what's during to get into our summer months, we then, uh, it actually is just primarily for our nursery. Uh, but during winter, we can actually remove uh, the city water by, uh, by ball valves and primarily only use tank water uh, on the entire farm. So we remove the cost of, uh, of city water uh, through from, I would say from October to about uh, March. We can actually run on pure tank water, which is also rain capture and then reusage of our wash pack facility, removing the cost of water, uh, which has been fantastic. We always knew that, I think the one thing that opened our, our mind to this process and using gravity to our advantage was that fact that we are on a terrace slope and that gave us the idea it would be a different process you're using pumps if you're on a obviously flat flatter farm um, but this is all through gravitation and then the only thing that is now being used off a charging pump would be to push the water back out to the farm um, but we once we bigger picture here is once we gutter the larger greenhouses this is where we'll have a, uh, a pond reservoir at the top of the farm because these will catch so much water <laughs> that the the nursery actually can within a rain event fill a 10,000 gallon tank and basically one rain event. So once we figured that these are guttered, that that's when we'll have to move a lot more volume of water to a larger pond on top of the farm and then use gravitation to do that. Anything I would do differently, I would think that, so one of the things is that we have our, our charging pump coming off the tank that is lower. So what happens is this tank will empty my problem is that I probably need a second line coming out of this tank into the charging line because uh, once this tank empties, I actually have to drop a small sump pump into this guy to remove the water back into the tank that works. And so there's a, we have a problem is that you can't have two large tanks draining into because one will stay full while one completely empties and there's no way of moving the water back over unless you're moving more water. So during summer, it gets to the point where I have to actually put a uh, pump into this large tank to move the water over which isn't a problem is just what i would do is differently is i would actually have a i can still do it is tap a new line into here and where both tanks come to the charging pump no matter what and then you could and you can facilitate what's happening by ball valve water management yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah i think i think that's about it sometimes we run into issues with uh like larger debris, things like that. So making sure that the silt tanks are cleaned. That's something we do once a week, cleaning those out. But like I said, these are, it's like just management tips for, you know, saving water, saving on water costs, you know, especially sometimes during, you know, summer, our cost of water can get up to almost, you know, $3,000 a month, uh, which is very expensive. So you can look at, really, we do everything we can to kind of mitigate that. Yeah, actually I can't, it, I don't have a, 
I haven't actually sat down on a number, but I know that removing the months between October and March from city on the entire farm has probably reduced that cost uh, quite a bit. This, we've had this for one year now. Having the charging pump has been on in the system for one year. Um, so it'd be interesting to actually look back this year and see what we did. Uh, in fact, the, I think actually last year, last year we used it a lot because I felt we, we had rain for six months. And so we actually we were able to use it all the way till uh, the latter part of May which is huge. It's huge to be able to remove that much cost in water till May. So it's probably a substantial amount. All right, how awesome was that breakdown? Make sure you are following Spencer on Instagram and all of the places. We will make sure to hook it up with links in the show notes. If you enjoy our work, please consider picking up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook or other merch at notillgrowers.com. That really does help us to afford to make all the podcasts and videos and everything that we do. You can also, as I mentioned, become a Patreon member at patreon.com slash no-till growers, or just hit that super thanks button. That works too. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. Um, let's see how, just keep going. Yeah. So the... Silence, but I'm here.